Very big Iron Giant vibes for this movie. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Wild Robot. I really wanted to see this film when I saw the trailer initially because of the absolute bombastic color design for this film. It wasn't just the forest and the animals, but it was also the robot constantly having a switch between blue, red, green, gold, and all these colors. And I could tell that this was going to be a very visual movie. After having watched it last night, it's probably in my top five for the year. Like this movie is such a phenomenal piece of animation, not just from the storytelling, not just from the voice acting, and not just from the animation, the color, but also from the music. Chris Bowers does a phenomenal score. Uh, this is a movie that does rely on some moments where there is no dialogue because the robot can't talk to animals at first. And then even then there are some scenes where it's just emotion, music and action that is portraying the character's emotions in the story. And it just moves so well. This film is based on a book that I never heard of. And I'm kind of curious about wanting to check it out now. The gist is it's about a robot that lands on this island that is completely devoid of humans. Uh, just for animals. Primary focus is to serve, but then when it finds itself with a baby gosling or a goose, it needs to figure out how to help raise it with the help of a fox, which I didn't know was voiced by Pedro Pascal until the movie was over. And they raised this goose through its own tribulations, through its own trials, all the while also becoming part of a community with the animals on the island. There's a part where you think that the story will end. Like, you think that him getting to learn how to fly is like the goal of the movie, but no, that's about the halfway point. And then there's so much more that follows with it. And this is a pretty mature children's film, I guess you would call it that, because there is death, there is loss, there is meanness, there is bullying, there is a lot of factors that are very rooted in e everyday regular life that this film doesn't really shy away from, uh, which I'm quite surprised with, is focused entirely on telling the story about the relationship between this robot and the entire island. And as the movie expands and you figure out what's going on with the rest of the world, you get a little bit of Wally -E vibes. I really enjoyed how subtle that was. It didn't really, really make it bombastic, it didn't make it the forefront of the movie. It was like, yeah, this is what is also going on, but the main story is about the robot. And oh my God, there are some moments in this movie that are just absolutely draw-droppingly gorgeous. Funny enough, it made me think about what I said about the boy and the heron at the beginning of this year. I thought that movie was beautiful, but that story made no goddamn sense. I know there's a ton of people who try to say, oh, it's all connected to all of these previous works, and maybe sure, but now that, that movie's plot is just... This has the beauty of that. Obviously from a CG standpoint, not a hand drawn, but a CG standpoint, a CG animation standpoint, but the story just flows very, very well. If there is one thing that could maybe be kind of pointed out as a nitpick is that technically speaking, characters just kind of teleport. And I'm not saying in like in big, long distances, I'm just so saying in very short spans is like all of a sudden they're at the bottom of the tree and then they're at the top of the tree. And can't really tell how they got there, but the film is moving so well and the animation style is so fluid and silly and whatnot that you're willing to forgive it. And it was only about, I think about the 10th time that it happened, I was like, yeah, you know what? I actually, I, I kind of see what's going on here. It's still such an emotional ride from the moment where you're getting chased by a bear, which is voiced by Mark Hamill, did not realize that. That part actually made me go, oh. uh, there were some really good intuitive usage of the animation, of the music, of the sound design. Even the 3D, like I said, with the bear swipes, and I kind of went, oh, if you haven't had the chance to see it on the big screen, I would definitely suggest it. I went and saw it last night at seven, and there was almost no one in the theater, which is really sad to see, because this is such a fun movie. All of the voice cast does a phenomenal job. They all kill it in their roles. Lupita Youngo does a fantastic job as the robot. Like I said earlier, it gave me a lot of Iron Giant vibes. Not so much in the slow and deep voice, but just a lot of the emotion from the robot being given in its color and its animation and its eyes and also the voice. Every part of the robot is phenomenal. It does exactly what it needs to do to help progress the story, to help really convey the character and to help portray this world and to help solidify this world on this little island with all these animals. 
Honestly, I think that The Wild Robot is probably one of the better animated movies I've seen in a long time. I really enjoyed it. It gave me a lot of vibes from stuff like uh, Lakia's work. It gave me a lot of vibes like stuff from Kubo and the Two Strings and even some earlier Disney movies like from like the Phil Collins era. Because there is, there's a song montage in the middle of it, which is so well done. And I wasn't expecting it, but I was just like, wow, this is great. There is an ending to this movie. If anything, it's a little bit too well wrapped up. I kind of would have liked a little bit of ambiguity to it. I'll say what I was thinking it should have done at the end of the review after I give the number, but again, it's, it's a very little nitpick. In the end, I am going to give The Wild Robot a 6 out of 7. It is absolutely one of my favorite movies of the year. Phenomenal draw by DreamWorks Animation. This is one of the best movies that they made in a long time, and I really, really hope that while it hasn't had as much of a box office reception as one would hope, I'm hoping that word of mouth when it goes up streaming and blah blah blah, is helpful because this movie is so so good if they did a sequel follow-up to it i would be interested but admittedly i like it as well as an its own story like i love the iron giant but i've never wanted to see a sequel to it so but that's my review for this guys thank you so much for watching please leave your comments about what you thought about this movie where do you think it lands with other animated movies of dreamworks as well as kind of like in comparison with the iron giant and whatnot Love to see what you guys have to say. Love to start a conversation. And now, spoiler bit for how the movie ends. When Bright Bill finds uh, Ross in the kind of commune with the other robots, I, I kind of thought that was a little bit like too well wrapped up when she picks him up and, you know, they connect. And obviously, like, you may remember, like, my name is Ross. I, I like that. If anything, I kind of would have cut it maybe about 15 seconds earlier when uh, Ross is looking up at the geese and she can hear them and she looks at them. I would have said to maybe change the eyes to something like resembling, maybe have her eyes be yellow or green. And then when she sees the geese, they turn blue and you can see this happiness start to glow around her. Or maybe the heart starts to warm up. That would probably been my way to end it, but I also love how the Iron Giant ends. So either way, such a good movie, such a phenomenal animation job. Really, really, if you have the chance, go and see it. You will not be disappointed. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.